Um, so, all right, we're going to get into Resolve, a uh, crash course guide for RCM and Resolve. So, fun stuff. What is RCM? Well, it is uh, their color management. I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of ACES. Anybody ever heard of ACES? So, it's very much in that same vein, that same mindset of ACES, but just kind of simplifies things and keeps it locked and contained to Resolve. So, it's kind of nice. Um, ACES is great if you're you know, on a feature film and you're doing tons of uh, vendors and, and VFX artists. Um, but if it's just like me, I'm a solo artist, or I'm dealing with very minimal um, vendors, uh, RCM is pretty cool. So uh, real quick, go over some benefits. Before that, though, this is not a magic bullet. You know, It's not something that's just going to solve everything. You've got to design and build a workflow. right? You've got to test your workflow, especially with VFX. You know, based on budget, based on time, based on your, your creative, things will change, right? Things will adapt. So your VFX artist may just need ProRes or may just need EXR. Today we're going to be jumping into uh, EXR with Linear Gamma, but you know, your workflow may not need that. Um, but we're going to have fun doing that today anyways. Some of the benefits I think of using RCM specifically for prepping VFX files are that you, could, you can unify your color space. So Shane Hurlbut is a cinematographer. He's got a great expression about all the different um, the digital cameras we have now. You know, they're, they're like digital film stocks. They kind of emulsify differently. They react to light differently. And that's great for production. But uh, for post, we kind of want to be able to unify things and know where we're playing, playing the same field, unify the gamma so we're not you know, all over the place. Um, it's adaptable. So what I mean by that is that you can work in one space, but you can kind of shift and, and export to a different one. And Resolve will help you transition all that color science right into that next space. Obviously, you want to have the proper calibrated monitors and, you know, and that sort of thing. And saving the best for last is, uh, you know, it, for me, when I do my visual effects, I want to be able to provide either my artist or my colorist the best possible either dynamic range or color science that I can give. So I want to preserve that all the way through the pipeline and deliver to them either EXRs or ProRes and Log C, whatever it is. But I want to preserve that as much as possible. So that way, the colorist has as much capability to kind of push and pull that color around um, without being mad at me. Um, so we're going to just assume that we've got all of our selects in and that uh, we've got our XMLs in. We've done all of our, all of our cut lists. And so we're just going to kind of use these four shots here. But what we need to do is go into our Settings tab. And on our color science for our master project settings, we're going we're to change it from how Resolve normally works. And they give you a couple options. But we're going to jump right into Color Managed. And that's going to activate the RCM. Then we're going to go to Color Management tab. And so, as you can see here in the top, we've got input color space, timeline color space, and output color space. So we're telling Resolve what we want, to, how we want to import our footage, what we want it to be, and what we want to work in. Um, that's our timeline. So for your timeline, you can kind of choose, much like how the digital cameras have their own um, digital emulsion, if you will, you can actually grade in what you want to. So I like airy color science. So I want to work in Eric Log C, right? But if you choose Red Log or Cineon Log, uh, it will actually change and adapt. So your tools, your color wheels, everything that you do will adapt to that. So it's kind of an interesting play. And you should definitely explore you know, trying different, different timeline color spaces. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select to separate the color space and gamma. So we're going to be in Airy Color Science with Airy Log. And then I'm going to output our Airy Color Science and go to Linear. So that's how we are. I want to work in Airy Log. I want to output linear for my VFX. Then I can switch my output and go back to Gamma 2.4 or sRGB or stay in Airy Log. So that's kind of the cool thing and the kind of the mindset of ACES is that you can tell Resolve what you want to come in, how you want to work, and then have Resolve translate all that science for you out for your output. So let's go ahead and click Save. Real quick on your, um, on your raw files, so like your red files or your Airy raw. You can, you can assign your color space as like Dragon Color 2, but you can't change your gamma because Resolve is actually pulling all the information um, from the manufacturer itself. So it's, it's all there already in, in, in gamma space. So you can't really change that. Let's jump into our editor. And so what, what we have now, we're, we're looking at our linear output. We're working in Airy Science with Airy Log. And just to show you that, I'm going to switch my output real quick just so you can see. So now as I click in here, you can see how it's changed, right? So there's our log C. That's what we're actually looking at. But since we're going to VFX, I want to pipe all that out to linear. 
going to EXR, it's just a container, right? I'm not changing my footage. I'm not making it uh, any better, but I'm just giving it a nice fat container so VFX can jump in there and start adding and, and going crazy with it. What we want to do next is kind of do what they call like a pre-grade, a technical grade. And that just kind of basically put our footage and kind of balance it out. So in this case, as you can see, our S log here, it's kind of blue. So we want to kind of just give it a quick uh, balance, which is what I've done already. And I've protected some of the highlights. So just kind of give it a quick little color balance to make it easier for my VFX artist. I don't really want him trying to have to balance out a shot. I'd rather do it here, control it. You know, so that way all he or she has to worry about is just getting their plates, getting their, their foreground, the background footage, and just start comping, right? Whether it's green screen or if they're doing uh, motion graphics. So that's what I'm going to do here. Just kind of go through quickly and, uh, you know, make sure my highlights are protected and just do a quick balance. And now we're ready to export out to EXR. So you would come to your delivery page and deliver your five shots, your 10 shots, your 100 shots, whatever it is you have to deliver to EXR, however you want to do it. I already have the files back. That's the quickest VFX we've ever had. It's already done for us. Let's bring it in real quick. And I'm not sure if you guys have used Resolve or are familiar with Resolve, but it's got a lot of features that are very similar to Final Cut 10 with metadata. So you can do a lot of quick uh, metadata searching. So if you're familiar with keywording and that type of thing, you can do some of those same things right inside Resolve, which is, I think, pretty cool and pretty handy. So let's look at our VFX. So we send it off to VFX. They've got their linear. They worked in, in Gamma 1 space. Again, you don't have to go EXR. You can go to ProRes. So depending on what, what type of level of work you're doing, corporate or if you want to do a feature film, you know, make it adaptable to how your workflow is going to best serve you. Um, but since we clicked Bypass on our input color space, I have to tell Resolve what, this, what these files are. So we'll select our files, and we'll tell Resolve, all right, this is, since we exported out Airy Color Science, this is Airy, and their gamma is linear. And I'm going to switch back to Airy Log C, and there you go. So now we've got all of our stuff. In this case, we just added some motion graphics. But it's all uh, protected and retained, all of our log C, all of our highlights, everything's still there um, you know, regarding that the VFX artist didn't export or clip anything. Um, but it's all there, ready to go for editorial. We can export straight from here as log C to ProRes, jump it into Final Cut and throw a LUT on there, throw the 709 LUT from Aerie. Um, or we're ready to color. So I'm just going to throw this on the timeline real quick so we can see what has changed or hasn't changed. All right, so here we have on our top, we've got our VFX has given us back the files as EXR files. And um, as you can see here, we've got, there's, there's no difference, right? So here's turning the clips on and off. We're still protected. We have log C, which for me is what I want, you know. Um, again, you can jump into cine, cine log, red log film, whatever works for you in your environment. But now we're ready to, to color grade. And um, all of our dynamic range, all of our color information is still there. And something that I've been exploring with that I think is kind of cool, um, especially for, for like a green screen where you've got a lot of foreground, background type of stuff, um, you can actually embed your mats inside of the EXR files, which is pretty cool. So depending on what your workflow is, depending on what you're delivering, you, know, you just got to be careful because it will fatten up your files. Um, but it's actually really cool, so I want to demonstrate that real quick. And you don't have to go and resolve and add it as a mat. It's just baked in with the file, and it's ready to be accessed at that moment. So in this case, I'm just going to select Add Mat. Right click and go to, I've already rendered out the text alpha. So we're going to really create, crank this up just so you can see the difference. I don't know if you can see that the text is changing. Um, I gave that mat for a text. Let's jump into. 2.4 gamma. So you can see now the text is pink instead of it, oh, it's, its original yellow. So not that you would want to do this, but you can kind of see the potential of, of embedding um, alpha channels inside your EXRs to be able to you know, tweak that foreground element or tweak that, that mid-ground element. And it's all ready to go. Um, so that's pretty much it. Again, you know, using a, an ACES mindset but using it with Resolve's RCM, so you're not worrying about input transforms, output transforms, and um, it just kind of simplifies things, but delivering unified, 
color space, unified gamma for your VFX and for your color as well. So that's pretty much my presentation.